Well, holy smokes, folks, did Sarah Boone intentionally stuff her boyfriend in a suitcase, zip it up, and leave him to die? That's the real question in this case of hide-and-seek gone bad. Hey everybody, welcome to Profiling Evil in this special edition where we're talking about the Florida woman who stuffed her boyfriend in a suitcase and left him to die, all the while filming on her phone his pleas for help. Now I hope you're going to take a moment, hit our like and subscribe button and ring the bell so that you're getting all of our videos. And please give us a thumbs up and share us with your friends. Now listen, I'm not claustrophobic, but this case really creeped me out thinking about it. The case dates back to February of 2020 when 42-year-old uh, Sarah Boone called police on 911 and reported that she forgot to let her boyfriend out of a suitcase that she'd stuffed him in the night before. Well, when she awoke the next day around 12, 1 o'clock, and that was only after her ex-husband kept calling her on the phone trying to figure out where she was to, to get custody of their kids. She awoke, called 911, discovering that her boyfriend was dead inside that suitcase. Now she, now she claims it was a drunken hide-and-seek game that led to his death. And she didn't even remember leaving him here. Boone admitted that she and Torres had been drinking the night before. And she convinced him to get inside the suitcase, which she then zipped closed. Now, she doesn't recall, according to her testimony, she doesn't recall taunting this guy who was pleading for help, telling her he couldn't breathe, and she continued to taunt him inside. Now, she didn't recall that, but she did, <laughs> she did film the entire thing. Now, at first, she claims she didn't know anything about it, couldn't remember it, but now she's claiming she's a domestic battered partner who simply blacked out only to awake the next day and discover the, the mistake that was made. Now, her comments almost seemed possible until investigators checked her phone and discovered that she had videoed um, taunting this guy as he lay in the suitcase. This evidence of her taunting and torturing the man who was repeatedly asking for help, stating he couldn't breathe and that he was dying. Now listen in as she's heard taunting him and filming and doing this thing. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. F*** you. Sarah. F*** you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't f***ing breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. 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 <laughs> Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe. <laughs> that's on you. Sarah. Real around some. Might want to get a video for it extra. Because <laughs> I got this. Sarah. Real around some. Sarah. Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. Oh. That's what Sarah. I feel like when you drink on me. Sarah. F you. Please, 
You should probably shut the f up. Did you catch that part where she's even laughing and you can hear her say, quote, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me, close quote. Well, I appeared on Court TV with Vinnie Politan, and I was able to join as a guest with Dr. Lara uh, Ludwig, who uh, is a wonderful clinical psychologist. And we had the chance to talk about what might have motivated Sarah Boone to commit this crime. Let's catch this first segment. Right, let's bring in our guest. Joining us tonight in New York City, nationally known psychotherapist, host of Talking Live and the Bite Size podcast, Dr. Robbie Ludwig is with us. Also joining us tonight from Salt Lake City, Utah, religious cult expert, retired police commander, host of the Profiling Evil podcast, and the author of the book, Deceived, Mike King is with us. Uh, Mike, what do we think about this hide-and-seek game? I, I, I don't understand that. Uh, I know how to play hide-and-seek. The rules are pretty simple. One person closes their eyes or turns their head, and the other person or people, they then go hide somewhere. Like, he cannot... He cannot zip the suitcase up himself to hide. You cannot do that. Because if he could zip it up, then he could unzip it, and he couldn't. Exactly. And this, this may be more, uh, let's do a magician's trick, and you climb in this secret box. And, but, but all of a sudden, what's so important here is that once this guy is in the bag, once he's zipped up, all of a sudden, something seems to trigger, at least when you're listening to that video, Vinny, because all of a sudden, we see this incredible surge of power, uh, dominion, control that she has over someone that may have abused her. There's evidence that suggests that there's been domestic violence in the past, but all of a sudden, she's in control, and she's relishing in it. Now, whether she remembers it or not, I'm still scratching my head over the keeping of that video, but the secret to me in this whole thing you talked about it early on, is how many times do we find dead bodies in suitcases? Man, don't get near a suitcase, whether it's that poor little Gannon Stouk that got stuffed in a suitcase, the Long Island serial killer victims that were found in suitcases, uh, a woman in Houston, Seattle, Arizona, it just goes on and on. Yeah, this is the first time, though, we've seen the suitcase as the instrument of death, right? As the, what's, wow. it's, it's unreal. Let's take a look Agreed, at Agreed, and I can't imagine somebody actually going through with that game and hide-and-seek baloney. Somehow that was a truth-or-dare moment, and then all of a sudden there was power and control. Yeah, and no mercy and well, no compassion. And none of that. It's, like, unreal. Well, after that, we talked about Boone's response when she spoke with police, and we talked about my thoughts about the interview. And I've been in these kinds of interviews. I personally was really troubled by the fact that she only seemed to be concerned about how this situation was affecting her. There was no comment or concern about her boyfriend, the man whom she uh, apparently loved, but the man that she allegedly stuffed in this suitcase, zipped closed, and allowed to die. Let's watch. All right, here's more of the police body cam, and here... They're talking about George's family and what's going to happen. What are they going to be told? What are they going to think of her? Let's watch. So, but do you guys tell his family, like, today or after yes, tomorrow? We, will. we have to. It's the law. Yeah. Once our investigation is pretty much complete here, we, once we leave here, we will be going to... But again, we'll know. I'm not going to just go and do it without you knowing. You'll know. We'll talk to you prior to doing anything like that. But how, I mean, I understand what you guys and how you do it, and, mm -hmm. you know, so, but, like, what are you just telling him? What do you tell his parents? Like, what's well, the I reason? Tell, so why? We tell him what we know at that point. Yeah. We tell him the truth. And that we're going to be waiting for the autopsy results, and I will be at the autopsy in the morning, and 
hopefully the doctor will be able to give me some of what they think and see. Yeah. We'll um, give them their number. They can contact them and get it from them. But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna know what we're here, what you know, what we're investigating, and that we're still. We they're gonna think they killed him. Why would they think that? They always have said that. They've always, always, always have said that. What have they I said? told you it's because I'm the blue-eyed white dragon. That's what they call me because they don't want him with me. So he's basically just not really been around his family because he chooses me over them. Even after I've encouraged him numerous times to go over there and see his family. You know what I'm not seeing, Mike? Uh, and she does not seem that broken up about the death of, of George. I mean, she's worried, what are they going to think of me? I'm the white dragon, blah, blah, blah. But not really, like, broken up that a man just died in her home. A man that was supposedly her boyfriend, whatever was going on in the relationship, he died there. Exactly. And this is the thing that I always like to look for when I spoke to people in these kinds of situations. I'm so glad Dr. Ludwig's on with us because here's the thing. Not once did I hear, oh my goodness, what happened to Jorge? Oh, I feel so horrible about Jorge dying. Oh my goodness, we need to make sure his family knows what happened. It's all, no, how's this going to impact me? You And by the way, police, I'm the one who tried to help him get better. And, and so there's this kind of fixing that's going on. When we were kids, we called it do-overs, but there's no do-over on a homicide. Well, Boone faces a trial soon, and I hope you'll be watching this one. I think it's going to be a really interesting one to see how it shakes out because Boone is planning on using the battered spouse defense. Now, the state of Florida recognizes the battered spouse syndrome, and while that might be her defense, in the video that we've seen on this case, it doesn't look like she's the victim. Now, that doesn't mean that she wasn't the victim before all of this happened, and it was that proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, but I think it's going to be a really difficult uphill battle for her, especially since she didn't seem to mention any of that during her interviews with law enforcement. In fact, she acts like she didn't know anything that happened when she was confronted. But, but when in an interview they confront her and say, we have a video of you taunting him, she says, I don't want to see that, and is very uh, behaviorally indicative of a response that says, I do remember all of this. Let's watch that little video clip. Mike King, as I, I watch her, I mean, this is, you know, some interrogations are a little more difficult than others. This one seems rather easy because, I mean, she's answering questions, she's staying there, and, and it's like she's laying the case out for prosecutors with all these lies and denials that, you know, instantly investigators are able to impeach her. Exactly, and the thing that's so powerful here is that there's physical evidence, there's forensic evidence, forensic evidence on the phone and other that I'm sure they've pulled into this thing. And the thing that I found so intriguing in, in her testimony is this idea that she doesn't even remember that this video was taken. She doesn't even remember what was happening, and yet there's some indication. Her immediate response was, hey, I don't want to watch this. I'm going to throw up if I have to watch this. So she does know, but she puts on this guise, or in reality, she can't remember. Uh, I, I think she would have tried to destroy the video if she really would have remembered it. And if she is that out of it after a little bit of wine, it really makes me wonder what's going on and what's happening in their other toxicology there. And I wonder if they got some, uh, some blood tests on her even the next day as they did this. The other thing is... This idea that she did CPR, somehow unpacking this guy, just like Michelle, the medical examiner, was talking about, when rigor mortis steps in, it's pretty hard to break all of that free, and that's kind of a, I don't know, a pretty blunt assessment. But to do CPR, certainly turning a body over or something, you're going to hear some gurgles and some things. There was no indication there was life there. And uh, all of that, I think the, the medical examiner is going to be able to show that this guy was probably dead for some time. So, Dr. Robbie, what do you think? Why did she make the video? Why, why at that moment did she pull out the cell phone and start recording? Oh, I think this is all part of this sadistic game that uh, maybe the two of them would engage in. Again, it was a power trip. 
she was in charge um, and I think she got off on the fact that her boyfriend was begging her begging her begging for her forgiveness was in a, a, a difficult lethal position and that she was in charge and so I think that there was some sadistic gratification some mis poor judgment there that who knows maybe she looked at it afterwards and enjoyed seeing what was going on over and over again and um it went into her denial well i don't know what else she has this is this is i, I don't know what the defense could be but uh, mike king in investigating this relationship and what actually happened that night I haven't seen or heard anything from the body cam footage, from the 911 call, or this interrogation that would lead me to believe that she was a battered spouse and was, was defending herself in some way in all of this. That's really the key, isn't it, Vinny, is the fact that there's not this precipitating event that causes her to then react and do something. Even if it's after the guy falls asleep and it's, she's been assaulted during the day or something, that's usually where we see these kinds of cases kind of build up the reasoning behind it. And they're gonna have to get a jury to buy off on the fact that she was responding when she uh, took this video. When 11 minutes later, she continued it and continued to torment and taunt and then she's going to have to face the fact that she'd been going over this over and over again in other domestic battery incidents where she was at times the predator and where he was the predator. But I'm going right back to where you are. There's got to be a precipitating event that led up to that. And it may be that they have to prove that precipitating event happened over months and months or years and years. But boy, it's going to be hard to get a jury to buy off that that happened just before and she hung around all uh, night. Well, this is a really interesting one, and I want to know what your thoughts are on this particular case, and I hope you're going to enter them down below. There were previous accounts of domestic violence between this couple dating back into 2018. So two years before this murder occurred, there were domestic violence cases, and it was happening both ways. I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Past behavior is predictive of future behavior. Put your comments down below, folks, and, and weigh in on what each other has to say and be kind to each other. Hey, and I'm going to put the entire police interview at the end of the credits if you'd like to listen to it. Now, it is rather long and it is a rabbit hole, but if you choose to go down it, I think you're going to find it to be pretty darn interesting. So check it out, but please give us a thumbs up here at Profiling Evil and make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button. Now listen, you can find Profiling Evil on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course on Twitter. So please check out uh, Profiling Evil. And also, if you like audio podcasts, check us out on your favorite podcast platform. And folks, if you're looking for a good summertime read, I'm going to tell you about a book I wrote. And the reason I'm telling you is because Sarah Boone's trial, the next hearing, is going to be July 24th. And the book I'm going to tell you about is a book about my great-great-grandmother, Jane Walton, who was murdered on the 24th of July in 1891. You know, I spent my entire career investigating cases like murder, and I thought, why not look into her unsolved murder? 120 years later, I solved her death. And I think you'll be interested in the story and what happened in the case. It is proof that cold cases can still be solved. So I hope you'll check it out. And you can find it at profilingevil.com where you can get a hardbound signed copy. Or you can go over and save a little money and get paperback at Amazon. Or save a batch and just get the ebook version. But I think you'll enjoy it. She knew no fear. Hey, don't forget to hang around for Sarah Boone's police interrogation. And let me say one more time, folks, from all of us at Profiling Evil, thanks so much for your support. We'll see you soon at the next crime scene.
Yes, ma'am. Can I, I want to ask you about these whenever we have a moment. Sure. Um, so obviously, um, he received his autopsy. So I'm going to read you your rights again because I, we have to talk about that. And since I'm talking about the incident, we just have to do it, just like we did yesterday. Protocol. Just okay. like we did yesterday. Remember I read you the rights? Yeah. Your rights? Yeah. So it's the exact same thing, but since I'm asking you follow-up questions, I need to read them to you, okay? Sure. All right. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without charge. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. And do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So this morning we went to his autopsy um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has um, by the doctor. So I want, um, so he's got <coughs> scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. Okay. And um, it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? So like basically you're getting hit and then, you know, you you, you get a mark from it, you'll get bruising, like some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that, it's called a, a contusion. So he had some injuries to his left shoulder. Um, he had um, he had a cut near his like lip. We could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I <coughs> also too. I he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall okay. or the hall tree. Okay. So why? Okay. I what, what about the scratches? Because there's also sex. Yes. Okay. Because there's also like a like a scratch on like the back of his neck, like kind of like going, but it's like going straight across. I have no idea what that's from. <coughs> and they're all recent. Like they 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 occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post or that occurred a week ago or two days ago, three days ago. They definitely occurred. You know, the night leading up to when he was. In all case. honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No okay. idea what it is. Nonetheless, I've had my son over at the house, too, so... I well, your son was there when? When was he last there? Oh, gosh. Last Am I week? understanding he was there, like, last Tuesday? Last... I don't know if it was Tuesday, but yes, he was there last week, so... Well, we're talking about Sunday. Yeah. We're make, we're just talking about what occurred Sunday, because like I said, the injuries are they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday, Sunday leading into Monday. You but called us yesterday at one, so but the incident you guys were painting and stuff the night prior. Correct. So we're talking about Sunday, and That's then into why Monday. I'm thoroughly confused because. <coughs> We had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch having wine and smoking a couple of cigarettes and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play, mm -hmm. and listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. That's, this is what's mind-blowing to me. Like, I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. He also had, um, like, on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising, um, and um, on, like, his head and his skull. I have no idea. As if something hit him. I have not touched trauma. him. I have not touched <coughs> him. I have not touched him. Then how would he get those injuries? Tell me and we'll both know. I have not touched him. Yesterday, when we took photographs of your overall body, um, and they did the buccal swabs. Did they go under your fingernails? No. Okay. Are you willing to let us absolutely swab underneath your fingernails? Go for it. Okay. <coughs> I have no idea, and I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I have no idea. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We've had good days lately, mm -hmm. even considering everything that's going on with our jobs and life in general and ex-wives and everything. It's been good. Like, I don't even know where this is coming from. <laughs> yeah, I don't even the know. last physical was probably, you said, I think, what, a month ago? Maybe. Where you got the injury? 
right? What, you said that was a month ago? A few weeks, give or take, yeah. A few weeks? That was the last, like, physical altercation between the two of you? Um, you said a month ago he hit you with a curtain rod. Yeah, with a curtain rod. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. <coughs> well. Like, we've been good. I don't know if, like, it's since the last time he got out of jail. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes mm -hmm. and his, seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So... What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? The probation you, officer? No, no. You said you guys have been good. What's your definition I've of good? I've been good. I don't yeah. think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talk to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I flee, I go over there. So... Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago. So give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like he gets belligerently drunk. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if you all have looked through my phone yet and seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm -hmm. And the at one point, I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures, bloody fingers, split foreheads, he split my nose. I've got this. Right. I don't know if Brian told you about it, where I had to have almost what? I had one really bad surgery, but then it got really, 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 really bad, where I had to go like four or five more times afterwards for them to tend to it, mm -hmm. from him poking me in the back of the leg. Right. So it's... Then why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this... I really love him, like I do, and I feel like I can help him, like I feel like I could help him, which I did, because he's come a really, he came a really long way from where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I've really helped him. I've bailed him out of jail, what, three times. I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did for him gone to see all his public defenders, go to the state, I've gone to the state. I, I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I have a, I had hope in him. And he was trying. He was really trying. Just, and then he starts to think about things and it just, I think he gets overwhelmed and then it's like, the next thing I know, he's drinking. So it's like, oh man, I know where this is going to go, so I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. Or I'm going to go for a bike ride or I'm going to do something else. Or I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend, that's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. He doesn't know how to, I guess, maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously, prior that I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but have smoke coming out of his ears. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else because I don't want to drink. And every time, every time, his job broke his heart. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful and basically gave up on all of the employees. So I think that had a huge bearing on why he would drink so much. His ex-wife is bonkers. Mm -hmm. She was all over him all the time. Send me money, send me money, send me money. How can I send you money when I don't have a job? And he's still trying to take care of me and Lucas by paying a bill here or there, getting some groceries. So he always had something on his mind, which is why, again, I got the puzzles and the bank to try to get him off of it so we don't have a drink or he doesn't have a drink. So when you all see my phone, you can see all of the damage he has done to me and the videos of him smashing my television because he's belligerently drunk. 
where most of the time I just don't want to be there. And I try to help him. I try to calm him down. Mm -hmm. Eventually he just passes out. Well, yesterday it made it sound like you guys were just drinking like a glass or two. Like, yeah, you obviously had the bottle, but you, I mean, you sense. told me on the, yeah, but you told me on recording, like, that you were not drunk, he was not drunk, you guys were having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I, number one, I do not want to get drunk. I don't like being non complimentous having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. Mm -hmm. So... I'm just saying, you're you're making it sound like like he's a raging alcoholic today, and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions, and you're like a little defensive, like, no, we're not alcoholics, he, I'm not. we are not, you know, but you guys were both sober on Sunday, to your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out, I just fell asleep, so now it's kind of like, what is it? Is it? Were you guys drinking, and it got out of hand, and... No. It got physical, no. or is it... Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. He's dancing with my dog. You can see that, too, on the pictures, him loving the dog. He loves the dog and dancing around, having a good time, and just just being happy kind of thing. He doesn't know. I can't... I mean, I can get, like maybe two, three glasses of wine, and I'll be fine. But I have to have my wits about myself because I don't know what to expect. Well, let's talk about Sunday. What was Sunday? How were you, like, how many glasses of wine did you have? How many glasses of wine did he have? The bottle was gone. I mean, I don't know if you poured any out. Yes. No, that was from previous. <coughs> you said that there was a half bottle left yeah, over. Yeah, about this much. Mm-hmm. And then um, that you had went, that, well, I don't even know how the wine, how would you guys get the wine for Sunday, I'm guessing he went to Publix. He's does he well, do the does he like leave the house and you stay home or do you go to Publix like because I know I'll go with him. Okay, did but you go with him Sunday to no. Publix? So most of the time, what happens is because <laughs> the convenience store where we get cigarettes is here, and then Publix literally is cattywamp us to it. Okay. So what he'll do is he'll start go by Publix and then on the way back catch the convenience store. Okay. So is that I, what he did Sunday? I, I'm guessing that's what he did because the next thing I know he's walking in with a bottle. Okay. So that's okay. it's him trying to be nice so I don't have to go out and do it. Plus there's stuff that are around the house that I had to take care of. So that's usually what will happen. Or I'm folding laundry and he'll go run out and do whatever. Okay. So where were you guys at on hmm. on drunkenness, not drunkenness on Sunday? <coughs> you I told us you weren't drunk. No, I was not drunk. Right. I was not drunk. So with him, I don't know. I I know when it's like, oh, okay, man, where I have told him, slow down. It's starting to catch up with you. Slow down. Slow down. And another thing, too, is I don't like listening to music with him because he gets too involved in the music, and the music that he listens to is a little rough around the edges and, like, just... It makes me fractious listening to his music. So I kept asking him, let's not, just, let's just you and me talk. You and me will just be the ones that are talking, which was fine because, I mean, he, we were playing with the dog, whatever, and then it's like, okay, now let's do the painting. We just did the puzzle, took a break, now let's do this. Sure enough, sat down. We're sitting in there talking, laughing, talking about new movies. We're watching movie trailers while we're doing painting and all that other stuff. So it's still background noise to him because I think that's what he's used to is having background noise. Where me, I can sit in here all day with not a peep. But he always has to have some kind of background noise, which I didn't mind because the trailers were cool. And he was interested in showing them to me, getting excited about movies that were out or upcoming. Okay. So on your laptop you're talking about? Mm -hmm. like, okay. And I mean, and then it, we, it was... But you a, said it was a good day. Like, you guys didn't have any have any uh, conversations about your relationship? You guys didn't go down, like, the rabbit hole, like, had too many to drink, and you guys start when getting... I, nope. When I tell you this, it made me so happy that he actually listened to what I, I had to say with just, we'll get through it. This will be fine. It's just, it's it's a small hurdle that you and I together will get through because... I'm talking about the money, jobs, stars. Yes. 
Nothing no. relationship wise though. Like no issues relation like did you guys have a conversation about your relationship or was it just mm-hmm. about just like what's distressing? going on right now? Got it. I try to evoke it from him so he gets it off his chest because I call him the volcano where eventually he's going to erupt. Right. And what he has learned in his classes is to communicate, Mm -hmm. which is a huge thing in a relationship where he has been practicing communication. So he actually talks to me about things Mm -hmm. and unburdens himself. Put it on me. I'll sit there and try and figure it out for you. Like I have almost everything. Mm -hmm. Not a worry. Just tell me. Get it out of you. But it was, when I tell you, I was so happy. Like it was such a good day. I kid you not. The weather was beautiful outside. I'm the one that had him go inside so we can do puzzles and painting and listen to music or whatever else he wants to do. So then he starts doing whatever it is we're doing Mm -hmm. together in the living room and then starts talking because I think he gets comfortable with, okay, you know what, we're here. It is a good day. Let me go ahead and explain myself so I know. Nobody else knows, but I know. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. And I tried in every way, shape, and form. Ask everyone. I helped him. I took care of him. I miss him a lot, and I didn't even sleep last night. I miss him a lot. I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you and you couldn't handle taking care of him? And I never stopped. Trying to I never stopped. Him. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now because I'm still trying to help him. Yeah. We just don't. I mean, it's unexplainable how he got these injuries. and I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea how he got them. Nobody touched anybody. Nobody touched anybody. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that you take uh, you would take photos, videos, just kind of like a proof, and just in general. Yeah, I started documenting at one point, but that was that was way before I think the last time that he got arrested, where he was flying off the deep end. <coughs> But then I had him bailed out. I got him out of jail. Right. But because he had violated the pretrial diversion, they this time it's probation. So you don't have a choice in it. You have to go to see your probation officer. You have to go to these classes. It's court ordered. Mm-hmm. Where it took him a while to get used to it and understand, they're not messing around. I even went down and met his uh, probation officer, which I say I she, she's wonderful. That's one of my questions that you need to talk to you about. Hugged me and said how much she knows that I take care of him. She called me personally one time when George was at work, when he was working. 42-minute phone call. She and I just saying how grateful she is that George has me. And she knows how hard I'm working to help him, just as she is and just as the classes will. So once he started actually going on a regular basis to the probation officer and then to his substance abuse class and his, I don't know what BIP stands for, Matters Intervention Program. Mm -hmm. And actually listening to what it is everyone had to say, he changed. Like I I could see a change in him where before lashing out, he would think about it and would always come home and show me his papers and we would look over his papers together where it's like, wow, you actually are learning this in class? And some of the stuff that they would show them, like videos, he would come home and be like, Sarah, I'm so sorry for what I've done to you. Because for a video that he watches to make him feel that way, where it's like, oh, man, I have done her wrong. But he's changed. He changed. And that's why you're still with him, even though he's done all these things to you. And When I tell you I love him, I love him. And when you have, when you love somebody, you have limits. Everybody tells me that. All my neighbors don't tell me that. Mm-hmm. The office, property manager. <laughs> At some point, somebody gets enough, and then they have to, to do something to defend themselves. I would just 
sweet. And I don't know if you um, would like to see it on my phone, or I think it's I think it's actually on a laptop. I actually because, and you have to understand too, I have like prior to classes in PO kicked him out how many times? I had him arrested how many times? But you also went down and bailed him out. I on. know. The next day. What's I know. What's on your laptop? Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, previously, mm -hmm. I actually looked up how to file a restraining order. Okay. Because so I would take him out, his parents, because of them constantly having to take him back in, his bags of clothes, all his stuff. The one time, the last time, the father came out and irate and just not even, I, th I don't even know if he knew Lucas was in the car. Just opened the back of my car and just started throwing all his crap in, just throwing it, like throwing it. Like the car would jostle, he was throwing all his stuff. At that point, because I continually did it, not continually, I think I maybe did it three times, and he has nowhere else to go, they got fed up and said, nope, either you're staying there or you're staying here. But if you're staying here at their place, it's permanent. You're not going back over there anymore. So what happens is he pursues me. So I don't know if you all know where Katie Way Trail is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we it's literally right, right there from our apartment. Mm -hmm. Would ride his bike to work, but before he would leave extra early and come up to the wall, stand on top of his bike and poke his head over because he would know that I would be outside having my morning cigarette and cup of coffee. Where and I would also know too what time he would get off of work. Where I would know, come getting off of work, he's gonna do the same thing. So it's not like I ever got like a break from him. Where I told you all yesterday or whenever it was, I started to feel that it was too much togetherness. And when you have too much togetherness, friction happens. So I'm going to go ride my bike. I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. But what he, every, what does he say, every waking moment he wants to be with me. So, and mind you, our townhome is either upstairs or downstairs. So it's like if you would like to sit downstairs and watch a movie or play on the laptop, look up some jobs, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to be upstairs maybe watching one of my shows or maybe reading a book. So, and then when that would happen, we really needed that. So what's for dinner? And then we would cook together and eat dinner and then crawl in the bed and watch a movie. Are you talking about this is like recent? I don't, you kind of like lost me. Like when, what are you It was a while, like, like a little while ago. <clears throat> but I mean, now you're talking about, now you're talking about tension building up and that you need space. So have you been feeling that way lately or? No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, my thing is too, so you all know. Oh, I, I hate that you can't talk to her, but um, D, his ex-wife. When I say a monster, she's a monster. Like it does. She withholds her their children from speaking to him. So he gets upset about that, and then she like completely berates him about money, about the father that he is, what he did to her, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, mind you, this has not, like, been recent, but, which is why he doesn't even bother calling anymore, because he knows that he's, she's going to answer and he's going to have to talk to her, so therefore he can't talk to his daughter. The other time, he talked to her, ma made her talk to Cookie. That's on my cell phone, too, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter. What does she have to do, though, with anything about... What happened Sunday and into Monday? Like no, I'm just saying like previously okay. why the incidents what happened is she plays a big part in it. Okay. On top of job yeah. and money and mm -hmm. groceries and all that. Okay. Sunday, I <coughs> when I tell you this, I have no idea. I have no idea. Is there anybody else at the house? No, nope, it's just point? me and him. Um. Since talking yesterday, do you remember any like time timelines better? Like what time uh, you guys were playing? What time you he was zipped up in the luggage? What time you I went upstairs? You, we started because we had we cleaned the house a little bit, did some laundry. You started the activities around four, you said. Yes, around mm -hmm. four, four thirty ish, and then. You just said that it was dark when you were playing hide and seek, and I'm just curious yeah. if you remember. But when we were outside, that's where we would start, mm -hmm. and. 
talk about things, and then eventually I was the one that had him come inside. <laughs> so we could About what time, do you remember what time that was, is what she's asking. Mm. And you said you went up you went up to bed around midnight. Midnight, -ish. fell asleep around 12.30-ish. But those are the only times I have. So I have four, and I have midnight. So there's a big gap. So I'm just curious, like, if you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower, or like when we started to play hide mm -hmm. and seek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we went inside probably about. If I had to guess, we were we weren't out there too long. Maybe about six ish. Then you're talking about from hanging out outside and like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have two beach chairs that are out there. And right. Just enjoy the weather. Gotcha. Plus, it started to get dark and gnats and mosquitoes. Yeah. So. Let's go inside. I don't want to be out here anymore. Okay. All right, let's go. So we're doing whatever. We did it for a while because that puzzle, I don't know if they took it or they saw it. Um, worked on the puzzle again, finished it, started to paint. Well, started listening to music for a little bit, started to paint. Uh, can we turn the music off? No problem. Started to talk, paint, whatever. Maybe... Gosh, that puzzle. We worked on that for probably a good hour and a half. So eight o'clock ish. Is when you went to hide upstairs originally? No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well I we can't I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just ugh. Come on. Okay, you wanna play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag you're it. Well so it's like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then you went upstairs and then he didn't come up and you came down. And the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations, and so it was the already case. there. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. So That's it was just kind of like that prop was there, and it was there, yes. and it was in play because. Why do you say it like that, though? I would <laughs> never do that. You would never zip him up in a suitcase? It, well, I, mean, I mean, we were playing. No, I know, but, time, I'm just, but I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm talking about hide and seek, which is a game. So, the suitcase originally <laughs> is in our closet, buried all the way to the back. If you, I don't, I know the CSI people saw our closet. Our closet needs to be cleaned out really bad. My son's clothes need to be cleaned out really bad because they don't fit him anymore, and I'm tired of looking at them. So he took it upon himself, including that suitcase to take it downstairs so we can get all of our clothes, our donations and everything, and just leave the whole thing by the clothing and shoe thing at my son's school. Gotcha. No, we're just, a I'm just asking, yeah. out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not, but obviously no. I understand, you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter, you were laughing, yes. he was laughing. But what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is it something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. <coughs> okay. Um, we were actually this last game running out of places to hide because we have a townhome where it's upstairs or downstairs. So. Okay. Um, okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover, anything, any t photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <coughs> no. Uh, I think I took a picture of a dog. Okay. But your phone is password protected, you have the password, mm -hmm. he has the facial recognition, so it's not like someone else could be on your phone. No, I have both. But you have the face and the password. Yes. And, yeah, but he only has the face, correct? No. To be able to get onto your phone, you told me that he looks at the phone. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought you were asking if I did. Yes, it's me. Okay. Does he have access to your phone? Because you said it's yeah. a shared phone. Okay. How does he have access? Sarah, can I buy your phone? Yeah, it's right there on the kitchen counter. Okay, oh, but how does he get it. into it? Because it's password protected. He'll, he'll come and get it to me, and I'll just do the face thing. Where sometimes, too, like, he's <coughs> look, he'll joke with me and say, okay, I need to borrow your phone. And he'll hold it while I'm cooking or doing something do the facial recognition. Okay, so he doesn't know the password and he doesn't have the facial recognition. No. But he is the only other person that would use your phone, I'm yes. assuming, other Well, than Lucas. Right. But Lucas wasn't there Sunday. Right. right. Um, so, to your recollection, no videos on Sunday? Not that I'm aware of. 
Okay. I mean, I like I guess <coughs> I, I maybe took a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs, and George and have them dancing. But I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Shut it down. Oh, okay. Let me. Very long. Yeah, it used to last a lot longer than that. I don't know what happened. Okay. Let me just grab something. All right. <laughs> no, I was just simply asking because um, you had a, a look on your face when she asked you if you've ever done that before. You look kind of shocked and. No. Okay. But why did you say it like that? Like. I don't think you all understand who I am. Where okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. I I would not do that. You wouldn't lock some, zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, I didn't, like, completely lock it. I mean, okay. I opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. And I wasn't planning on going upstairs and going to sleep. Okay. No, it was just the way you said it. You guys you are scaring me. Why? Well, we just want you to watch this. This came yeah. from your phone. Don't you want to know what's on it? Yes, please. <laughs> Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm-mm. No. I don't know how much I can take. <laughs> Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone. And you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> For everything you've done to me. Oh. Fuck you. Oh. And Fuck a, you. That's you, oh. your voice. Last time we talked to you, you had said that you put him in the suitcase, he had two fingers hanging out, and you I went flipped to bed. him over. I flipped him over, and that's where it was. There's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions, and him saying that he can't breathe, and you saying, fuck So you. this is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yes. Like, as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now, he's obviously still in there. So he didn't... How did that... How did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. 
My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional of. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? you were Stopped getting here. ready for bed. Stopped here. Okay, but here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out because there's it's, the end. It's And his head's right here. Mm -hmm. So going like this, rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying, I can't breathe, and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? And it doesn't it's, show a hole. You, there's, there's no, no hole. Out. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. I'm just showing you. I'm just telling you what we see yeah. and what we've heard from the other video. I understand. Video. I understand. He's begging to let for you to let him out. You sound... You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then Just, what is that? What does fuck you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my oh, like he in, does. Like I get called <laughs> everything but a white woman. So okay. I my intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that my intention was not. To leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking yeah. that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at why no I point when I see his fingers. And He'll be up here any minute. Like, and then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling me. And I he can't wake up. He, Do you he's think he's joking? To you told me he was laughing, and I. We were before. The video, there's, there's no. When he first got in there? Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like, this video is at 11.12 when it starts, so was he in there for, like, a long time prior to you no. recording this? No. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny, but I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was, like, panicky. Like, I didn't, I... So pushing up on a suitcase saying, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I can't I breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> George has done that in the past before, too, where it's just like he thinks that he's woe is me kind of thing, where it's like, I don't well, he's never been locked in a suitcase, but no. he couldn't get out. So It's kind of, I thought it was and the boy you know crawling wolf, thing. crying wolf kind of thing. Okay. And again, my plan. But, that, but nowhere in there is he laughing, is he joking, mm -hmm. he is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Please don't, I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but, <coughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me. Like, no, I'm just trying to show you a video that you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Well, I know what. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. Just because I went upstairs and just you because you're drunk doesn't you mean that you times that you were not drunk. You said that you had your wits <coughs> about you. You said he had his wits about you. Mm -hmm. You said that you don't like not having your wits. In my experience, if somebody cannot remember doing something to the extent of making two videos and a video and taking a photo, they are intoxicated. Okay. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I get just it. trying to make sense of it. We're trying I get to figure it. out. We're what trying you're to figure out this you video. You explain it to us. We're listening. I <coughs> just did. Like we were playing, and then like I thought it was. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to. He'll be up here any minute. But, but you again. willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get My pain wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs, and then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think, he's asking to come out, he I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> well, I thought by not zipping it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the and suitcase. what was your plan? Waiting for him to come upstairs. And you then when he did it? I fell asleep. You said you were up there 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, somebody not coming up. I Knowing that, you, that the last time you saw him was in the suitcase, 30 minutes later, you're like, 
mm, maybe I should go check on him, maybe I shouldn't. No. Well, you didn't, that didn't cross your mind because that's it like didn't an, That's like an assumption. Like, that's what you all are thinking. Just We're asking. It's the whole... You tell us. It's the drinking. That's what it is. It's the drinking. I thought it was, like... I thought he was okay. Like, I didn't... That, you he's all, telling you he's not. He's telling you, Sarah, I, I can't I, breathe. He's saying your name, and you're like, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Guys, that's how we are with each other. Like, he has... Nobody understands our relationship. This, the whole suitcase thing, never happened before. Would you leave someone else in a suitcase? Would you leave Lucas in a suitcase jokingly? Because it was a no. joking matter. You put him in there jokingly. Would you leave Lucas jokingly no. in there? And you love Lucas, right? And you love I wouldn't George. do that to him, either. I wouldn't do that to him. So, I, I just... Oh. Well, so I'm like, again, I don't think you all understand. Like, it's... I mean... It's not my... That was not my intention. <laughs> Y'all don't have any idea what I've done for him. So, but by your acts, and that's exactly right. You get to the point where you've done so much for somebody and they don't no. show you any appreciation. He did. Not by, by your words in the video. I don't get that. He did. Because you bring up the fact that when he's choking you, you can't breathe. That's how you felt when he cheated on you. You couldn't breathe. And you he's verbally several times told him just fuck you. Well, you well, said it you in, said the, it in the video. Won't let us play the rest of it because you don't want to. When I say cheating, it's uh, on his phone. Okay. <laughs> cheating is cheating. I and think so, cheating. too. Exactly. It's your definition of cheating, though. So, I mean, yeah. that's what the word cheat means. And that's what you told him in the video. That I couldn't breathe when you cheated on me. No. That's how I felt when he said, Sarah, I can't breathe. And you told him, I don't know what you This is... What would you say if somebody told you that they had done this? Done what? Is that somebody in a suitcase and went up and went to bed? Do you all not think... So you all think that it's like, oh, good, I got him in there, now I'm going to go to sleep? Is that what you guys are trying to assume? Or trying to, like... Or just the video is very portraying of the opposite of what you told us. No. It is not... Yeah. It is not leading up... It is not matching what statement you gave us in the car. So and that's why we want to know... And the I don't injuries, remember doing this. The injuries okay. are not consistent with what you told us. So we have a lot of inconsistencies, and this video explains itself. It really, truly does. Do you don't think that I have thought about <coughs> that? Thought about the video or thought about... But no, again, if you don't mind, please. So you all are assuming that it's like, oh, good, I got him in there, now I'm going to go to sleep. Is that what you all are assuming? Well, it's not an assumption when that's what you told us that happened. That's what mm -hmm. happened. And the video... Yeah. yeah I mean... But I'm not going to say... You thought he could get out on his own. Yes. Uh, but the video shows that he cannot get out on his own. But I, but when I unzipped it, I unzipped it with one finger. From the outside. But it had the hole in it. And you're claiming that it had a paper clip, so that's what assisted you in doing it. No. Is what you told us. When I had my sweatshirt, <coughs> I said I thought it had a paper clip on it. It's got. But the zipper part is broken. That. Yes. Which is why we were going to zip it. Yeah. I I just. You were able to unzip it from the outside, very easily, because that's the way they're designed. But you could on the inside too. I don't know how. So why wouldn't he have gotten himself out if he could? I don't know. Like I don't know if he saw like where the hole was. I don't know. I didn't see a hole. No one I didn't see the no finger You're sticking the only out. One that's, that's what I'm saying. Like he's in one position, yeah. and where his head would be, we should be able to see fingers. Yeah. And then when it's flipped over onto this right side, again his head is closer to us facing the video, so we should be able to see fingers. And we don't see anything. We see no movement of him trying to unzip it or physically unzipping it. All we see is pushing up trying to push out of it. Please do not assume. I'm not I, assuming. I haven't intention. assumed anything. I, I follow evidence. But my intention was not, again, oh good, I got him in there. Now I'm just going to go to sleep. What do you think someone that 
knows nothing about this or hears just a little bit like, oh, they were playing around in a suitcase. She's been and drinking. Then, and then watches that video. Probably went to sleep. That's what happened. But you let him out before. I mean, you put him in, so why didn't you take him out? Because I was upstairs and I fell asleep. No, before you went upstairs. You, like, consciously had to walk upstairs. Do you, I mean, you obviously remember going to bed because you were able to give me a time frame on that. Mm -hmm. And you specifically mm -hmm. told me that, that you went I upstairs. My intention is not for this to happen. I am sick about it. I've never done anything like this before in the past. I am sick, especially with that. I thought I couldn't sleep last night. I don't okay, know. Well, here's the thing. You tell us the last night, you, you vividly remember this when you told us last night that he was laughing, you were laughing, you put him in the suitcase, he has two fingers sticking out, and you go to bed. Now we see something totally different, and it actually shows you upset and, again, using uh, derogatory terms to him when he's begging for his life to get out of that suitcase. So, so what but my you say we're the, assuming, we're not assuming, but we're the telling fingers, you what's on but, there. So it just happened to be that whenever I was videotaping or doing whatever else it was, it just happened to not have that in it. Okay. And you also, in the video, you can't see any holes. There's nowhere in that where the zipper separates and you can see a hole. If there's a hole, he's pushing on it, begging you to get out. We should probably see that 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 hole. That he you're eventually would have been able to get out. Yeah. Alcohol. Based off what you're telling us, he should have yeah. been able to get out. Okay. But the video shows him attempting to get out, begging to get out, and he can't. So that's that's just what we're trying to figure out. I don't know if maybe you had too much to drink, you zipped it up all the way, and then you know. I did not zip it up all the way. Okay. Well, I did not zip it up all the way. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, so horrific. I don't think I'll ever be right because of this. Ever be right. Dealing with everything else that I have in my life, personally, mm -hmm. and then this, okay. whom I loved, it was not intentional. I will put my hand on the Bible. It was not intentional. I would not do that to him nor anyone else. But you did. Not intentional. You intentionally went up to bed. <laughs> I didn't intentionally, intentionally go to him. bed because I'm thinking, okay, good, he can get on. out. How did you not intentionally go to bed? You said you went up to, upstairs and got into bed. That's intentionally going to bed. Waiting for him. And he doesn't come, but you don't go down to check on him. So I happen to go to sleep. When I say go to sleep, and what do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you mean? What is a bed for? Going to sleep. Right. So you go to but bed to do what? But obviously you tell too that, like, you I think you also. You go to bed also. to do what? Okay. You kept telling us, hey, I wasn't intoxicated. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. Being drunk and intoxicated, which, yes, okay. you can tell that I had been drinking, but. Okay. So if you weren't intoxicated, then why would you ever leave somebody in a suitcase I, that's begging to get out, that's telling you they can't if breathe? If I weren't, if I hadn't been drinking, you you still think it would be the same thing? Where it's like, hop in, I, I'm going to go to sleep. Is that what you all are trying to do to portray We're trying to do anything. I'm simply asking you to explain to me what happened. Everything was fine and dandy. I don't Everything call it fine and dandy. Was fine and dandy. Explain you all don't how. okay, for for me to tell you this again, mind you I've been without him for a day now. Mm -hmm. I don't know I I I mean I don't know what you all want me to tell you because this was not in any way, shape, or form. Hand okay. on the Bible, intentional. Okay. So you just left I him there to teach him. I didn't kill him. You left him there to teach I him a lesson? You. I didn't mean to leave him there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got up and walked away. How is that not intentionally leaving him there? Because I'm looking at the hole knowing that it's, a, it's there. He'll get out no harm. Because you don't. And then he doesn't. But, but the, you don't go check on him. 
You say you're up for 30 minutes and he doesn't come up. You don't go down and check on him? I'm in the bed. You even move and don't I mean, off. You move. You admit to moving the suitcase like over. So you roll it. You roll it out. Like it's not like I didn't want him to be me like that. Don't. You didn't want him to be upside down. How do you even get upside down? Right. You guys are killing me right now. I just want you to hear me. That's how he talks to me most of the time. I don't know how, I don't know how you want me to say it. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out what you would expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a suitcase. I didn't mean to leave him in there. Okay. What's your but reasoning for um, not calling 911 sooner? Because I didn't know what to do and how horrific it was. I called Ryan and like what, five minutes later I called you guys? Not even five minutes. Nonetheless, that I had to like try to, I was trying to do CPR. I was trying to do CPR. I had to get him out and try to do CPR and then call you guys. And it was continually doing <coughs> CPR with the dispatch on the phone where he had me count out loud to help me focus on what I was doing. It just, I don't know how, I mean, you you can sit here all day long and say, I thought he was going to get himself out, but that he didn't, and you went upstairs, and you stayed there for 30 minutes before you fell asleep. How, but can I say, too, like... You chose not to ever at any point during that 30 minutes walk back okay. down and check on him. No, wait one second. Because I know, like, with you all, and then, like, because <coughs> you can continually ask me, like, time frames, time frames, time frames, where I told you, like, I don't bother even looking at the clock most of the time. So it's, like, a guesstimate. So I, for all I know, I was, maybe it was 10 minutes. Okay. But the point is, you left the living room where he was begging for help and went upstairs. Regardless again, of how long you were there, you left. You say, I, I thought he was a, the boy calling wolf. Again. Okay. So when he asked to be let out, like, what's your reasoning for not letting him out? When I was upstairs? No, when he's asking on the video. He asked multiple times. He asked to be let out. I can't breathe. What? Like, why didn't you let him out? Well, number one, I, uh, number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Okay. Number one. Okay. Uh, number two, just, you know what? I'll give you five minutes or so in there. That's, they'll give you five minutes or so. Five minutes for what? Well, based off the video, one video is at 11.12 and the next one's at 11.23, so you actually gave him at least 11 minutes per video recording. So my, my thing is, when it stopped, he asked multiple times, I mean, why? Why did you not let him out? It's just a simple I, question. To be honest with you, I, I mean, I don't Were know. you punishing him? No. <laughs> Well, that's what you're saying in the video. Um, this is what you get. This is yeah. what you make me feel like. See, and then it's all backfired on me. Like, it's all backfired on me. And I understand the severity of this. I just... You did. It's awful, I know. Okay. It's awful. And I will tell you both this right now, too. I will never drink alcohol again. Okay. Like, I will never drink alcohol again. I don't care what it is in any way, shape, or form. Okay. I'm but let's get back to this. What was the reason for leaving him when he's begging to be let out? I don't understand that. What I have a feeling was, and again, it's the whole time frame thing. You all I, I, I'm not asking a time frame. I don't care about a time frame. So he's in the bag saying, I, I can't know, and I, my God. And you say, fuck you. When he... So, like, for, like, the whole few minutes that he was in there, like, I... Minimum 11, but yes, well, go ahead. It's a few. 11. Minimum. But, but for the one video. Well, in between the two videos. In between the two minutes. videos? Okay. Yeah. So, and, so uh, what, what's the so question again? When he's begging for his life, telling you he can't <laughs> breathe, let me out, and you say, fuck you, why don't you just let him out? What are you trying I to prove to him?
there was obviously I, something in your head that you were thinking of when he was asking to let you, be let out. And you're like, no, again, it's no. the boy calling wolf. Okay, but where did where does this game end? I don't. Did you say this is a game? You got obviously in there. like the wrong way. So what was your intention for leaving him in there? And it's not fair. It is not fair. You guys are trying to again. Oh, he's in there. Night, night. That's what happened. No. That's absolutely what happened. Intentionally. How's it not? You got up off the couch, walked up the flight of stairs, and got in your bed. Thinking he was going to get out. And he didn't. And you still didn't go down and check And it's the whole 30-minute thing that you guys are trying to do. I don't care about Whatever. Like, I, for all He's I know, it's 10 minutes. He's begging for his life. He's begging for his life, telling you he can't breathe. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't. I didn't intentionally mean for this to happen. But you can't tell you us intend? why you left him in there and went upstairs. That's my only issue. Like, what am I supposed to write? What do I write? So my thing is, though, it's what I have a feeling is I went upstairs and just hit the bed kind of thing. But, again, I'm thinking he'll be up here any minute. But then I go out. Well, my question is why didn't you just let him out prior to going out? I don't know why. He's begging to be let out. He's not laughing. <laughs> He's not having fun. This, you I said, don't know. This, you I said don't know. this was supposed to be fun. You were laughing before. Before you said he was laughing, you were laughing, you went upstairs, he had his fingers out of the bag, and he was playing. Well, obviously that's not the case. So are you guys, so what is it you're trying to, like, we're just trying to figure out why. Why? Why? What? Why? What was why? the motivation for leaving him in the bag? Why he was left in the bag. Why the video? I didn't have any motivation. It was me, he and I having a great day, fooling around and being stupid, and apparently me going upstairs and going to, okay. hitting the bed, not going to sleep, okay. where it's like, hmm, I'm tired now, I'm going to go to sleep. Well, that's, that's excluding, you know, that's a good analogy for the day, excluding the fact that he's got a, a, a bump on the back of his head, a bump on the front of his head, and his lip is busted, and he has a oh bump on gosh. his eye. I, mean, I don't know what you all want me to tell you. Like, this is not fair at all, at all, Yes. that you all are assuming that that's from me. Where else did it come if from? If you were, say it's opposite, you were in the suitcase, and you're asking to be let out, would you hope that that person would let you out? Like, you're asking to be let out of a suitcase, should they not let you out? Eventually. I'm guessing. I mean, I don't, I'm blaming it on the wine. So you guys are like assuming that you keep saying we're assuming or we're not we haven't assumed anything. Questions. But you guys are assuming that that's what I did. No. By what like, this the, is the facts of what happened. We got there, you said he, you pulled him out of a suitcase, you said you went up you went to bed. We're not assuming that. These are the facts that you're telling us. But now we're asking is you like, to oh, I'm tired. Them. Oh, I'm tired. Well, that's what you told me on a sworn recorded statement yesterday. Because when I said, oh, you went upstairs and passed out, you were like, no, I did not pass out. You got attitude with me because you were assumed, you yep. thought I was assuming that you were drunk. So that's, that's an assumption. That was an assumption when I said yeah. you passed out. And guess what? You corrected me. You were very adamant about the fact that both of you had your way out. <laughs> What's your favorite word to use? Compass You've used it today too, that, to say that you guys are within your within your wits. <coughs> There's two two empty bottles of wine. No, but we didn't drink both of them. I think you did. Mm, we didn't. There's receipts for the same. They were both purchased there. yesterday, so I don't know how you didn't, because they weren't there the day before. <laughs> the one was. Two public receipts from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Only thing purchased on either one was a single bottle of wine, two of them. So we have each bottle of wine that was empty in your garbage can that you purchased yesterday, or he purchased, but you two would have consumed together. Okay, well, I... Okay. I mean, it's receipts, so it's not even worth the... Going so back. this is... <coughs> so I don't know what you guys are... I don't, I don't know... We were just hoping that we could figure out why you... What was the motivation? There was no motivation. Well... But we're watching a video that 
after talking to you, everything was ha laughing and fun. Now we're watching a video where it's not laughing and fun. He's begging for his life, and you are in a very angry voice telling him to fuck off. No. Yes, not that's ac absolutely what it was. It's not an assumption. <laughs> the video is there. We played it for you. So you guys think that I intentionally... You did. It, you it, got it up on the couch you, it doesn't matter and walked what up we the couch. Think. Or walked up the stairs and got into bed. That was intentional. There's no way getting around that. You intentionally did that. Nobody drug you up there. You didn't float up the damn stairs. Okay, well, it's not fair. It's not fair that you guys keep trying to say that that's what I did. I don't know what to tell you. You told us that. You didn't go upstairs? <coughs> Again, there was a hole in a suitcase. I unzipped it from the hole with one finger. Well, the damn hole didn't do him no good, did it? But he could push it open. <coughs> no, he did couldn't. He? I, the video no. shows him pushing up. If he could push it open, why wouldn't he have gotten out himself? Why would he beg you to open it? Okay. I tell you he can't breathe. Okay. If I, someone I, can I, do something for themselves, they're going to do it. They don't need assistance unless they need assistance. So, but why would he and start doing it? Because he couldn't because it was all the way zipped. Okay. Didn't see it. It wasn't. I intentionally didn't do it. That I intentionally did not do. What was that? <laughs> you didn't intentionally do what? Zip it all the way. He nor I, nor I. Well, he's dead as a result of your on each other. He is dead as a result of I your action. I understand that. So That's why you this two didn't lay hands this. on each other. No. <laughs> no. I don't have anything. You're right. He doesn't. Uh, whatever that is, whatever this, whatever it he is. He does. <laughs> see, this is what happens. It's not fair that you guys, just because he has those, automatically blame it on me. Like, well, what about when you had you, your injuries and he gets arrested? Is that not fair? Really? Like, it's really? the exact yeah. same thing. He, really? He has injuries. You have injuries. Like, what does that mean? I don't have any injuries. Correct. Because he and I have not been at it with one another. <coughs> so every time that you guys fight, you, you both hit each other? So you should have probably no. gone to jail all those times that he went to jail no. for domestic? Oh, the one time I did. <coughs> but he completely, completely trashed the police report because that's nothing what happened because the reason why I got taken in was because my story was different than his. So I'm being per portrayed as like this uh, abuser. We're not saying that he doesn't abuse you. Absolutely. We're not saying. So I'm the one that's being portrayed as the abuser. <laughs> Because I have sure. never dealt with anything like this before. I don't know what to do, how to do it, and I always know what to do and how to do it. This, I don't know. So I don't know, like, what's going on or, like... <laughs> we are simply trying to find out as well. Again, we got one side of the story. You're telling us we're going with what you're saying, but then we find stuff that negates what you're telling us. And I don't even remember doing that. You're telling us that we're assuming stuff, but what we're simply doing is telling you what we saw in the video and I repeating understand. what you told us. I understand. Because I don't remember that. Okay. Doesn't mean it didn't happen just because you don't remember it. So is the texting thing something about me? Like what's... Is the what? Texting? Oh, no, I'm texting. No, I... <laughs> you guys are scaring me, so, like, I don't know, like, what to expect. I mean, I had questions of things that need to be taken care of. Like, I don't... What are I your mean, questions? I, I have one last question. I just, I mean, <laughs> you're, you realize you're the person that killed him, right? I thought about that. Okay, you left him in a bag when he's begging you, saying, I can't breathe, let me out, and you said, fuck you. And you got up off the couch and went upstairs and left him in that bag. Not intentionally. Again. I would never do that to George. You did. Not it intentionally. Happened. Know that. I don't. Know that. You got up and you went up to bed. Alcohol is a shitty thing. It's alcohol. So Not, I again. the reason that you killed him? You all? Please sit down. Listen to me. 
You all listen. I did not, not intentionally kill him. So you're intentionally. I don't know what it is I need to do him? or how to do it or what to say or how to say it. But your but what was your intention? Everyone knows. Everyone knows everything that I've done for George and love him and continuously helped him throughout his life with me and made him a happier, better person. And everybody has their limits. Everyone knows that. Everybody has their limits. So it's like, okay, so while we're in a good place right now, I'm going to snap? Is that what it, while we're in a good place well, right now? Yeah. Absolutely. I got you on video screaming, fuck you. This is what it feels like when you're choking me. This is what it feels like. Which was you however long ago. <coughs> you said it. The video was from last night. It clearly. So it wasn't that. Yet. Yeah. There's still feeling towards it. You wouldn't say it if you didn't feel it. But I would never do that. But it happened, and you did. But, you but did that's it. after being playful. But no one's laughing. And having a good day. No one's laughing except you. Every day. Oh, I'm sorry? I would hate to see a bad day. Y'all are making me out to be. <laughs> person that I'm not, nor have, or will I ever be, or are you a different person when you're drunk? People have different personalities okay. after they consume alcohol. It depends. It's like it's well because you're sober now, yeah. so sober you. Nice person. What about drunk you? Going? Not. <coughs> it's both of us. It's both of us, and it's again, it's not fair that you all are assuming that the marks that he has on him are from me. We asked you where they came from. I have no idea. Well, nobody else was there, so nobody else was there. I have there. no idea. I swear I did not lay a hand on him. Okay. You just zipped them in the bag. Nor he. You just zipped them in the bag. And then you flipped the bag around several times. I didn't do that intentionally. You didn't intentionally flip the bag around? No. Why would I do that? Well, you Good question, you did. When and he was upside down. Right. Well, you had to put him upside get, down. You can't get in a suitcase upside down yeah. because the... Oh, my God. Well, you put the See, stuff that's in his where his body was? That's unfortunate well, because yeah. nobody else was there. <coughs> that's well, we have a video thing. showing the, the suitcase in several different positions. So uh, it shows, one, like she just said, it had to been on its back with the lid open for him to get in there for you to zip it up. Then it shows it on the other side with him in it, so you had to flip it to there. Then there's another video where it's on his back again, so you had to flip it there. I'm leaving it like this, please. I'm leaving it like this. I did not intentionally do this. No malicious content or effort was towards this. No malicious. I would I'm say this does that help you sleep, but you're not sleeping, so. I mean, uh, Last night, the, the, I maybe got an hour. Right. right. In your voice, you can hear the maliciousness. The fuck you is very, very... <coughs> you don't talk to people obvious. like that. That's not like a common, like, nope. hey, Scott, fuck you. Thank that's you. not That's not common. It's not something people do. And no one that sees that is going to think that. Okay. So we were trying to give you an opportunity, and, and it is what it is. There's no maliciousness towards okay. that. I would probably be telling myself that too. My intent, that my intent was not for that <coughs> to happen. But you went upstairs and went to bed. Or maybe you passed out, I don't know. Whatever. Waiting for him. And the whole time frame <laughs> thing, it's like, it's regardless. That's not really regardless. fair. Regardless, yeah. waiting for him, you, it's not like you you walked up the stairs. No one can, you can't fly up the stairs. No one can take you up their stairs. Okay. You go up the stairs, you lay in the know. bed. And you wait for him. Who cares if it's five minutes? Who cares if it's 30 freaking seconds? He's begging for his life. He's begging to get out. You go upstairs. You leave him. It home. doesn't matter. So it could it, get the time frame out of your mind. It this whole thing, this, like, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter because <coughs> there's this. So it doesn't matter anything what it is I say. So it, it makes no difference whatsoever. It's just you keep you're lying and like you're not you're now changing Who's your story. Lying about what? You're now 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 you're drunk. Okay. Oh, I never said that I was drunk. Exactly, but you did here today. 
That's okay. You said earlier. Everything's everything recorded. Alcohol. Blamed on, you blamed it on the alcohol. You blamed it on the alcohol. Alcohol does a lot to people. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I never said I was drunk. Okay. <laughs> you did. So you did okay. this. No, you did this sober. You knowingly left them down there sober. Uh, I have already told both of you also that we were both drinking. Right. Okay. But you want to admit that you were drunk? Is that? I'm telling you all both. This has changed my life. I will take this. I don't know. Yeah. That's a true statement. Absolutely. But you're trying to dance around the fact that <laughs> so, you did. So, but what are you? Okay, okay just, just. You left them in there. You're trying to oh dance around the fact this that is, you left them in there. This is not. I, you didn't leave them in not, there. It's not cool. Like this is not cool. It's not cool. That is. He's dead. It's but not you cool. think that I did that intentionally? You think that I did that intentionally. You intentionally left him in there and left the room. You went upstairs to a different room. You intentionally did that. You you did. Yes. Because I'm thinking he's going to get out. Okay, and he didn't. Obviously not. When somebody's begging for their begging, saying I but can't But when you breathe. say that though, but you have to. <coughs> you don't let me out. I can't. Y'all don't know George though. Like that, that. Again, I thought it was the boy crying wolf. So it's just like, what? Oh, so if your son was in there and said, I can't breathe, are you going to open it, or is is he nine, so he's not, you know, really? it's not a good deal? I'm not a valid really? question. Oh, you right. said you would never put your son in a suitcase. <laughs> you would only put George in there. No, George got in a suitcase. And you well. zipped it up. Not all the way and not intentionally to leave him there. But that's what happened. You keep going away from it. I don't know. That's, I don't, that's I don't exactly know what happened. You went I, up I, the bed so and woke up I, the next Are day. you all trying to have me admit that? Like, are you trying to have me admit that? Because I will never admit it because it's not true. It's not true. I'm basically stating as a fact because that's what happened. Okay. You videotaped him asking to be let out. You go upstairs. So what, guys? So what? Like, just, I don't know what you want me to say other than it was not out of maliciousness or intentional. I don't know what or how I can say it. I love George. Love him. To this day still. Love him. Love makes you do crazy things. It doesn't do, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh gosh, you know what, I've done enough for you at this point. I never gave up on him. Okay. Why I'm here today, I'm still not giving up on him. I would do anything for him. Well, you gave up checking up on him. So. I wouldn't let him out of the suitcase. Oh, gosh. Okay. I, We're simply just trying to go through. I mean, again, <laughs> you gave us a completely different story that you churched up to. This was such a, a laughing matter. It was. It was, was fun. Not by that all video. day, all Not by day. That video, that part all day. Wasn't. Anybody looking at it doesn't. I don't think anybody so, would look at that video and go, "George is having fun right now." So why is it you all think that I, I, y'all don't know me? You don't know me. Nope. Would do something like that, especially having a nine-year-old son. I don't know. Like why? Nine-year-old nine -year son would be. Like why are you so? Why are you so like caught on what we think? Yeah. When because you should be more like concerned about what you've told us. It's because and like you guys are like trying the things that the video shows that are opposite of what you told us, and then what you've now like told what is opposite? Today. Well, you said that it was funny, and you're yeah. the only one. Laughing. We were playing before that. Okay. Um, but then it stops. Yeah. It obviously stops being fun. Well, I because you're screaming at him. He's not going to get screaming out. at him. Mm, sounds like screaming to me. I don't know what you all want to, me to tell you. In no way, shape, or form was this intentional. At all. Ever. Okay. Are you still going to allow us to do your fingernails? Go for it. Go for it. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to get that set up. <coughs> do you need any more water? No, but when you come back, can I ask about this? Mm. Yeah. So what? I just don't understand. 
So it was I don't understand how your story changes so much. So the how fact is that it changing? Please help me explain. Understand. Well, you, you went on about how this was such a playful thing, and you guys were laughing, and it probably was for a few minutes. But then it obviously changes. The whole demeanor of this whole situation completely changes. It's not the funny, laughing matter. He's not laughing at all. I didn't think he was being serious. You absolutely sound serious. I didn't think so. Now. Like just. You don't think your voice? You sounded it's, serious. It's okay. I. I don't know what you want me to tell you. It was a great day. Okay. It didn't end well. Obviously. I was going to say that. Uh, I mean. I can't explain to you. I can't explain to you. How horrific it was. Okay. To find him. Horrific. Because I don't remember taking those videos. Okay. How horrific. Yeah. I'm thinking he's in the bathroom. I'm thinking he's downstairs in the laptop. I can't find him. Okay. So, what, so what's <laughs> going to happen? Like, Here's what gets me, though, is you don't remember taking videos, you don't know where he is, you don't remember him being in the, in the suitcase, and you're still telling me that you had your wits about you. I, How does someone have their you know, wits about them when See, that's the thing, too. But you can clearly tell, you can clearly tell that I had been drinking some. Yeah. You can clearly tell. I had several people that came up to me in that apartment complex said that you were drunk on a daily basis. Oh and you my were gosh. At him right. Regularly. Right. Um, really? Right. Talk to the property really? manager. Talk to the property manager. Okay. Because it's not... These are your neighbors, the one that live next to you. Your property manager does not live next to you. They see you every day. How many... Oh you had gosh. two neighbors you went to and asked to go see, to the restroom. See, that is just not fair. Hold no, on. You had two different neighbors that lived directly next to you. You asked to use a restroom and they told you no and turned you away. You had to go oh. across the way to somebody oh. else. No, okay. Kim and Eli... Eli, or Kim is not a nice person. Okay. She's just automatically not nice. Even right. after me and Lucas went over there and introduced ourselves, she's just you, not a nice person. Then why would you think she would let you use a restroom? Because Eli was in there. Eli comes over and talks to us sometimes, which I think pisses Kim off because okay. he comes over and talks to us. The two of them, they're like super standoffish all the time. My neighbors down the street, down the way, their toilet was broken. They had stuff in the bathroom. So then they're like, bathrooms. go over there and try over there. There's two bathrooms. They're I wouldn't let somebody bathrooms. go upstairs and use my, my personal bathroom. That's what really? the downstairs one is for. If it's somebody you like, would you? I, or somebody you knew? They're in the process of doing all this stuff in the kitchen. Okay. And they're stuck in the bathroom and the toilet doesn't work. Just walk across the way. No problem. Mm -hmm. And of course they let me in. Them and them, they're together. They're part, they're family. And nonetheless, if you really want to know, and I hope it doesn't get them in trouble, but he is over here illegally. So he's trying to work on getting his green card. What does that got to do with you using the restroom? They didn't want to be involved. No, no, no. I was asking last night because, you know, I mean, we had several different people Assuming in the neighborhood that come up saying Eli and she Kim. Was drunk on a regular basis. Eli and Kim. Eli and Kim. Okay. Did you ask Vinny next door? Those are the ones next door that she asked to use the restroom, yeah, and they said no. No, she said no. Okay. And like I said, she's not a nice them. person. They're coming. What are your okay. questions? Yep. I can help you out. Who's coming? To do the fingernails? Yeah. You said that we could. <coughs> and you don't have to allow us to do it, just so you know. So don't think that it's I don't have a problem. Can. Okay. Just so make sure. <coughs> so am I getting my phone back? No. Not today. Um, what about Lucas's laptop? No. Not today. Not today. What does that mean? We're still going through everything. Oh, that's fine. You're the one just telling us there's videos that we need to see on it, so we that's need to fine. do our due diligence that we go through everything. See, and that backfires on me now, too, because now you all think that I had even more, in quotes, intent to do what I did to him, which was not intentional. Okay. What's that? In that. Is that correct? She's asking about your tag in your hand. No, but I'm asking if that's correct. No, I'm not going to agree with anything that you're saying. I'm not that you're. No. So his probation <coughs> officer. Mm -hmm. Do you all inform her, or do I need to call her? We don't need to. We don't have to inform her. So if you would like to call her, you can. Are you saying because he's still on probation? 
no, but it, because of the nice lady that she is and all that she's done for him, I thought it. I didn't know how it was. Legally, we just have to tell his parents, and we don't go telling. We don't. Everybody else. I didn't even know who his probation officer was, so no, I wouldn't go tell. So the same thing for classes. I need to do that too. Um, classes. The you need to do what? Substance abuse class and his <coughs> battery intervention. Yeah, so we don't have to call to ask. So, other than this, so initially, what was the cause of that? She is still pending because she wants to hold the body for an additional day to see if more of those bruises turn into something bigger. Um, and uh, she's doing some other tests that she's got to do. So, she's pending it for now. So, and that couldn't have been because <coughs> of him being in the suitcase. Or that's y'all are saying that I physically what, did it. That's what she's determining. So the, the ones on the head, I, I asked her, could that have been from the suitcase? And she said she didn't think so. I didn't touch him, nor did he touch me. Okay. I'm leaving it at that. Okay. Um, so... I don't know if you all know how to do this because I, so that's what I was going to get ready to ask you. So are you all updating his parents today or when you get to final whatever's? What does it matter why? what we tell his parents, what do you mean? Because I, I we're going to have, we're going to talk to with them. Yeah. Okay, I, mean, I have to But it's going to like, come down to me. What do you mean? Like, so it's being put on me. Who said that? But I'm not, so what is it you would tell them? <laughs> We're going to give them an update, just like we gave you an update on their autopsy. Okay, so it's whatever bruise well, is here's the thing. and here's the thing. whatever on the head. We, we had to deliver news to them last night that their son was dead. There's not a whole lot of conversation that goes on after that. It's not a very easy thing Was it to yesterday do. or Sunday? Sunday. Today's Tuesday, right? Did we not meet you yesterday? We met you yesterday. Yeah. I'm just asking. Right? Did we not meet yesterday? It's a valid question. Uh, really? Yes, on Monday. Okay. 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 Got it. Perfect. So I don't know if I ask you guys or how I find this out other than talking to his parents, which not gonna happen. Yeah, probably a terrible idea. What? How do you guys suggest me finding out about funeral? Yeah. That's not even something that's been probably talked about between the family. That's not something we ask. We have no way of. I know. didn't know. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So it will be up to them to make the arrangements of what they want to do. Like she just told you this quick, just being told last night. I'll pretty much be willing to wager that they have not even considered what they're going to do. My right. body can't even be released. No. So yes. I've been there with parents, grandparents, aunt and uncles. Um, so I don't know if I have the right to or not, but like I was going to call his former employees, whom he really cared for, and let them know. You can... Call whoever you want. I just don't want to do something that I'm not supposed to. Um, how do I go about getting his um, wedding ring, engagement ring? It's at the medical examiner's office. It'll come to us eventually. And no, it'll, then it'll be released to, oh, to, to the, the next of kin. Yeah, okay. I bought it for him. Okay. That is a civil issue. It was on his finger. It goes to them. They're the ones that are going <laughs> to release it. We don't have any say in that. So I won't get that back. So for all of this, like, how do I find out what's what, how many, like, what's been found? What do you mean? Uh, pillow with stain, swabs of stain from pillow, suitcase. That will all be sent off to FDLE, FDLE Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Yeah. They do their testing. So, and then, like, whatever white can with blood and necktie with blood was from the suitcase. Correct. Why would you guys, oh, 
you'll see it in there, the baseball bat for Lucas. And the seats. And this is just his phone, my phone, and then the laptop. Yeah, when anything can be released, we will release it, but we are very early in this investigation and it's not so, an overnight process, unfortunately. So, what's next? They're going to come and swab their fingers. No, I'm talking about, like, in the long run. Like, what do I need to, like, do I need to be doing something or, like, I can't tell you like, what to do. I mean, like, so, like, for... Like, I don't understand, like, I don't know if you guys are just going to, like, because it makes it sound like to me, like, I'm being accused of something that was not intentional. I'm being accused of it. Mm -hmm. And a handful of other things that I'm being accused of. Okay. So I don't want to be at home with Lucas and you guys show up. Okay. I understand that. So. It's, we're still investigating. The word... I don't know what you want me to tell you. So, is there going to be concrete whatever it is, and then it's like, okay, this is what it is, kind of thing, or like, because I've done the whole court thing, I've done the whole <coughs> attorney thing, I've done whatever. So, if I'm not admitting anything about being intentional and I killed George, okay. that's not the situation, but it's trying to depend on me. Okay. That was not my intent. But it's trying to be pinned on me. So however or whatever it is I need to do in order for that to be proven, then I need to do so, which is why I'm trying to get my ducks in a row. Okay. So that's why I'm asking what the next step is other than me getting my nails swapped. I mean, you want me to tell you how to not be accused of a crime? Is that what you're asking? Like... I don't know what you I'm want. trying to prepare myself for whatever may need to be done so I can, I, I guess, stick up for myself. I mean, I think you're doing just fine. You came, you talked. I just don't want you guys to, again, show up and Lucas is in the house. Well, we did tell you yesterday that we don't want to do anything around your son, hence why you came to us. So I don't know why you think that's going to change. That and or me not just show up back home. <coughs> I'm sorry, what? That or what? Me just not show up back home. That's what, oh, he's so happy that I'm staying over at the house with Brian. Like, so happy. And I'm not going back to the house, to my house, for however long I can stay over here because of whatever to blow over. Mm hmm and again, if you don't mind me asking, so for whatever it is you all are claiming from the videos, which, yeah, it's, is that what you're going to tell them? Like his parents? It's like, oh, yeah, and by the way, she did. Did what? I mean, what would you tell them? I don't think it really matters what we're going to tell the parents. Oh, yeah, it is. It's steel to the fire. Well, we can't hide things, and I don't know, I, I'm not saying we're going to go, <clears throat> I'm not saying that we're going to go and tell them every single thing we have, um, but again, this is the Orange County Sheriff's Office as public record, so eventually, like, this all will come out. Mm -hmm. So, it, that, like, I'm not, no, you're making it sound like we're going to tell them something, so then your life is in danger, and... I don't like that accusation. No. So let's just nip that in the butt right now. Well, that's what's going to happen. I cannot. But I we cannot can't, choose, what are we going to tell them? But we can't even. But so <coughs> technically, there's no concrete report yet, even. Right. So so it's. Um, you want me to like tell you exactly what I'm going to tell them? I don't know what I'm going to tell them. I don't know what I'm going to tell them. Let's just leave it at that. Just like you don't know why you went upstairs. I don't know what I'm going to tell them. So. Can, that are dealing with can, I do, can I call you the way that I did last time? Yeah, my phone is an open line. Missy should be here. I don't watch TV. I get it. Look, I get it. 
that looks really bad. Mm -hmm. So that's what scares me. Like, what do I need to plan on? Like, what do I need to plan on? I promise you, on my son's life, it was not intentional. I promise you, okay. on Lucas's life, it was not intentional. <clears throat> I don't know you. I can't say I know anything about you. I don't know what is what would be a true statement, what would not. I mean, if you're promising on your son's life, that's fine. That's how much it means. Sorry. That's, how much it, look, that's how much it means. Okay. I hope you take that to heart. Please. And it's documented that you said that, yeah. I get it. Do you have any idea when I can get my phone back? No time What do you say? I just said no telling. I mean, it's our digital forensics unit has uh, got a lot of cases on their plate. I mean, well, and that's not technically my hard. laptop. It's Lucas's laptop. Okay. But he plays. You'll see all the games that he has on there. As soon as we can get that back to Lucas, we will. As soon as we can release your phone, we will. But doesn't. We have no way of being able to tell you because we don't have control over their caseload and how they they arrange what they do. So I don't know. And at this point, I think, honestly, with everything else that's going on, that should probably be, be at the bottom of your list of worries. I'm trying to make Lucas happy so he can have his laptop back. Okay. Okay. Did yeah. Brian not have a laptop for him? He has his laptop that he has to do for work, okay. but he doesn't want him using it or breaking or dropping. It's not a big deal. There's nothing on the laptop anyway. So you will keep me posted, like updated. Mm -hmm. That's my thing is I'm trying to figure out what I need to do in the meantime. I don't know, I can't, like, I don't know what to tell you, though. Like, what am I, what? But you all have more information than I do where it's, <coughs> yeah, you might want to, or yeah, you might want to. I'm sorry, what? Like, we have more information on what? Like, we told you everything that we have. You know everything that we know. And most of it we got from you. But that, like I was telling her, like, yeah, that's bad. Like, which I swore in my son's life was unintentional. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what I need to do for myself. Okay. Going forward with this, nonetheless, with his family. And are you all just showing up with Lucas and Al? Well, I think we've already both told you that we would be mindful of any situations. So do you guys, I guess you're going to call me tomorrow? Or do we need to come back down here? I'll chat with you next time. I have no idea when I'm going to call you next. Uh, isn't the report come out tomorrow? No. What report? I'm just saying a report is generated through us, and the sheriff's office is a public entity. So if someone were to come request something, then... No, I'm talking about um, his autopsy. She's waiting and doing more follow-up, but... She's looking at him again <coughs> Yeah. But she won't be finished with him because she's, she's pending for other stuff. So after this, what? I'm done? For now?
long does this stuff take to get back? The you, you won't get back. The swabs and stuff will, will stay. They all know about it? Sorry. Our dispatch center keeps calling my phone, and I keep having to have other people call them to see what they need. I hope you all can really both truly understand that that was not my intent. I miss him a lot. I mean, no I, it, but my question has remained the same. What do you expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a position like that? <coughs> yes, but you have to understand too. I know. No, no, just what would you expect? to happen to somebody when you leave them in a position. I had no idea because I've never done it before. Why have you never done it before? Why would I? Exactly. Why, Why would I do you? it before? Why did you do it now? I, I, I clearly have said why. I, why? No, you don't know never, why. You, never, you just know that it's not intentional, yeah. but you don't know why. But that's okay. Really? I'm not trying to force you to say something that you don't know. <coughs> it's fading and penning. you guys would assume that I'm that kind of person. We're not assuming anything. <laughs> We're going by the facts. It happens. Like you said, you don't know me. What time is it, please? Four forty six. for me to have to live with getting him out and doing what I did is punishment enough. I think that's why I haven't slept, because that's all I see. So that right there says something. Not my intention. Nonetheless, I have to live without him now. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. 
punishment in itself. Yeah. Definitely uh, a tragic situation. I am through with alcohol. And it's unfortunate that stupid things like this happen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. Nonetheless, I have to live it on now. Too. Are you trying to make it worse? Sorry, what? Are you trying to make it worse? Make what worse? <laughs> How I feel? Just making, making a comment. I mean. CSI, that was there yesterday. I think she took your photos. I'm just going to take a swab and go around on one hand and then do the separate one for your other hand. Okay.
you'll be able to uh, use a phone in the in the waiting and how area. long will that take because I need to talk to Brian you know it depends how busy how quickly they get you through I probably would say within the hour it's a free phone yes. call yes. In, the, in the lobby it's a free all phone I'm call all I'm doing is bring you there sign yep. the paper and you're all done. she has no clue so can I ask you or whoever it is mm -hmm. um those holding cells the holding cells Mm -hmm. Am I going to be putting one of those? Because I don't know. Last time I had a panic attack. Okay. Let them know that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you, you're familiar with the big bay. As long as you go in and you act civil to them, they'll set you in the big bay. And you'll be left there for Can a while. Can you request while. that while I'm there? No, that's not up to us. Mm -hmm. We don't work at the jail. As long as, 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 long as like he's saying, is you, if you don't if act you go up, in and act like this, you'll go in and they'll put you in the big bay. If you go in there screaming and kicking and yelling and Why cursing at people, that? I don't know. I'm just letting you know that's what happens. That's how they, they weed people out. If you go in acting like this. So I ask for the big bay? No. They'll put you there as long as you're acting like this. I, yeah, because the last time I had a major panic attack on those little things. Hey, I don't know. Yep. Change the coach. Go stand up. I have not found So what am I going to do with my purse? purse? Oh, sorry. Your purse is going to come, but the cigarettes and stuff can't, so. I put, in, I put the lock up to my bed. Oh, no, it's all good. Mine are now opposite, so. What made you all decide to do this? Made us decide to do this? Uh-huh. George is dead. You guys, I knew this was going to happen. You did? Okay. So I came well, down here willingly. Yes, absolutely. We were trying to figure out what's going on. We're still trying to figure out what's going on. Unintentionally. Intentional or not, George is dead. <laughs> you, you act like when you say unintentionally, that absolves you from everything. I need to get, I have my, I don't know if it's and able to be or not. Oil, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I have things in my car that I need to. Okay. Put your what kind of stuff do you have in your car that you're worried about? Well, I have my medication. Okay, they have a pharmacy there, so if there's something that you have to have right away, you'll be seeing a nurse. It's panic attack stuff. Well, again, when you get checked in, you're going to be seeing a nurse. And that they have a pharmacy there, so they'll be able to take care of any kind of that stuff. That protocol is out of my realm. I don't work down there, so I don't know, but I do know they do have a pharmacy. And that you will be afforded to see somebody. Okay? All done? Yes, ma'am.